Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pocket Size Bio. I'm Dr. Casco. And in this video, we're going to talk about mutagens, right, in the chapter of variation and mutations, right? So there are many ways in which uh, DNA sequences can get their um, sequences changed, right? The DNA can get their sequences changed, and it could be from physical mutagens, chemical mutagens, biological agents, right? So in these sections that I'm going to talk about today, we're going to take a look at the various ways in which the sequences of DNA can get altered permanently, causing a mutation. Okay, so we're going to start off with, if I can just, there you go. We're going to start off with errors in DNA replication. This is one way in which you can have a mutation in the DNA, right? Uh, aside from that, you have cell division also in which you can get mutations in DNA. <clears throat> so let's get into it. Um, so in terms of DNA replication errors, you guys know that DNA replicates during um, the S phase of uh, the cell's life, right? And during the cell cycle, you have the G1, S, and G2 phases during uh, basically comprising interphase, right? During S phase, DNA is replicating, right? It's using a bunch of enzymes to enable it to make um, uh, duplicates, right? So during that period of time, right, where DNA is exposed to environmental factors and whatnot, there is a chance that it can get, um, that errors could occur, right? Now, generally, DNA replicates very, very well, very accurately, right? And even when errors do happen, you know, um, the mechanisms of DNA replication um, enable it to kind of proofread, right, and able to fix, you know, any kind of mistakes. But, um there are times where not even the proofreading mechanism can um, salvage right the error, basically creating an alteration in the DNA, right? And that's when you get a mutation. So uh, it usually occurs during the S phase of the cell cycle. And um, yeah, you know, DNA isn't foolproof, right? Um, and what happens is that DNA polymerase, can insert a wrong nucleotide, or there's even a bend inside the the um, uh, newly forming, you know, DNA strand. So um, uh, sometimes there's a replacement, right, uh, and whatnot, right. So uh, these are referred to as DNA replication errors. Okay. Ultimately, whenever the mistake doesn't get fixed, that's what you call a mutation. If you take a look at this little diagram here, you have a template strand of DNA, right? And you have that newly formed or that that the newly synthesized strand that's in the process of being formed, right? Um, it is possible that depending on the sequence, you can have the newly formed strand kind of bump out just because there's a similarity in nucleotide basis, right? So there's like a little bulge coming out where an extra... I don't want to say extra, but one of the nucleotides wasn't placed correctly, and then you have a little error there, right? There's also a scenario where you are creating the new strand, but the original strand, the template strand, gets that little bulge loops out, looping out there, right? So ultimately, you result in missing a nucleotide, right? Or you add an extra nucleotide, Okay. Um, now you don't need to know the specifics of this in the in in the scope of waste biology, but just know that replication could produce some errors there, right? Um, uh, to create mutations. Another way that you can get a mutation is by what are called reactive oxygen species, right? It's short for ROS, right? And these are very corrosive chemicals. They're very reactive chemicals that contain oxygen, thus the name, right? And here are several examples of these react, um, uh, reactive oxygen species, right? That they're generally removed by a uh, catalase enzyme, right? Um, but if there's an excess amount of ROS, uh, it has the potential to react with DNA 
and it inhibits a proper replication process, right? So uh, again, you might get some uh, prone to error there, resulting in a mutation. Um, these reactive species, uh, reactive oxygen species actually are produced during mitochondrial metabolism, right? And oh, my apologies here. And um, uh, the mitochondria produces a, a good amount of it, right? Just as a byproduct. But um, um, generally we remove these with catalase, right? Um, <clears throat> but um, depending on the type of reactions, you might get an overabundance of these, which could lead to a mutation. Okay. And um, <clears throat> uh, you also get cell division errors, right? And uh, in cell division errors, if I go a little bit down here, okay, uh, these are errors that occur during cell division, right? Basically mitosis and meiosis. This is after replication already is happening. You're about to enter these two um, uh, processes, either, either or process. And in this case, you're um, focusing on errors at the chromosomal level, right? Um, just to give you some examples here in this template, what happens here generally is that there's an unequal crossing over, let's say in the case of meiosis, right? Um, where for whatever X reason, uh, sister chromatids, right, are misaligned, right? And um, during that crossover, right, you're... Basically, um, because they're misaligned, you see how this uh, uh, chromosome here is a little bit higher than the other one. What should occur naturally, right, is where you have these two and they're nicely placed, right? They're nicely aligned. But it does happen sometimes where they're misaligned. So whenever you cross over and you give uh, one of the legs of each homologous pair, for example, one of them will ultimately get an extended leg and the other one will essentially um, um, miss out on some information there, right? So having a misalignment will lead to unequal distribution of um, of the chromosome um, uh, part, right? So because there's a misalignment, you have some extra DNA on one um, chromosome rather than the other one, while the other one loses okay, um, uh, DNA. So in that case, you basically have something called an insertion mutation where one of them gets an extra pair. So you have it being a little bit longer, and then the other one will, will have a shortened leg. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, the one that has a shortened leg will basically be a deletion mutation, okay? <clears throat> when does this occur? Uh, generally for um, meiosis, right? Um, is during anaphase, right? Anaphase one or two. And um, when the chromatids don't um, uh, separate adequately, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to even be a crossover, for that to happen, right? But um, you could get some mechanical problems occurring during anaphase, where you're having some misalignment occurring, right? <clears throat> and of course, this leads to very, very detrimental, um, um, generally, right, results, okay? So this is cell division errors, right? This is um, DNA replication errors. Okay. <clears throat> now, I do want to emphasize um, the book doesn't go into so much detail if you're using the Nelson Waste biology, but um, uh, it is possible. You know, I was mentioning about um, uh, repair mechanisms, right? Let's say you have your original DNA um, strand, and then you have this base pair uh, substitution, this base pair in the middle, right? And it is possible that the proofreading mechanism can restore the sequence, okay? If the proofreading mechanism cannot, then you have a gene mutation, okay? So that's in terms of uh, cell division and DNA replication errors, okay? Here's some questions that you guys can take a look at and answer, and you can uh, 
post a, a comment below, right? Another um, cause of mutations are what are called mutagens, right? And then you can have physical mutagens, you can have chemical mutagens, and even biological agents that can promote a mutation, okay? Talking about physical mutagens, you have um, um, high energy radiation that will physically do something detrimental to the uh, DNA strand, right? Um, <clears throat> generally high energy radiation, right? Electromagnetic radiation, you guys probably know already, being a high school class. Um, uh, UV light, right? Um, can increase the risk of skin cancer, right? But what happens in this particular case is that you can get a fusion, right? You could get a bonding between adjacent, usually T um, thymines or cytosines, right? In the DNA sequence, right? And this is referred to as cross-linking. And you can take a look how that would look like, right? You would get covalent bonds between the nitrogenous bases, right? This is referred to as a dimer, right? You can see a representation there. <clears throat> And that would inhibit the proper functioning of DNA, right? Um, there are cases where you get breaks in the DNA, right? And um, of course, having a break in, in a either a nitrogenous base or a backbone, the sugar phosphate backbone, that can also lead to replacements of nucleotide bases that will lead to a mutation, right? Um, so X-ray radiation can cause a loss of adenine, right, and guanine bases, but it can keep the sugar phosphate backbone intact, right? So if you lose a base, if you're losing the bases, then you're you're kind of losing the sequence then because you're removing the nucleotide bases, right? So definitely it won't be um, um, the usual right, the normal sequence that you have. So this will lead, again, to a mutation, okay? Now we understand, um, you know, sequences and their effects on transcription, translation, leading to protein. So we can understand that by having a change in that DNA, you're going to lose that functional protein, right? So X-ray radiation, uh, nuclear radiation, this comes from, let's say, you know, decay, radioactive decay um, of a, um, uh, of an element, you're losing particles, beta, alpha particles, gamma rays are being formed. So this type of nuclear radiation, right? So in this case, you're having, you know, double-stranded breaks in the DNA, right? You're completely fragmenting the DNA um, particle and even a chromosome, right? So let's say you have this, um, this sequence of DNA, right? And in the case of nuclear radiation, you can completely, you know, break apart the DNA strand. And this could be a problem because if you lose a chunk, you're going to lose that whole chunk of DNA in a whole sequence of nucleotides, right? Um, sometimes the break is even. Sometimes it is uneven, right? Generally, when it's uneven, there might be a chance to salvage, you know, restoring them back because they basically can create the complementary ends where they can stick back together, right? But if you have even breaks, that could be much more difficult to restore and fix back, okay? Um, these uneven breaks are referred to as overhangs, all right? So nuclear radiation, x-rays, and UV light are examples of physical mutations, okay? <clears throat> and um, uh, there are chemical mutagens, right? Uh, for example, sulfur, mustard gas, and bromouracil, 5-bromouracil. These are very toxic. These are um, uh, cancer-generating, um, uh, sorry, um, mutation-generating um, chemicals that essentially the chemical itself can be substituted as a nitrogenous base, uh, right? Um, as you can see here in the, in the little figures here for bromouracil, it could act directly as a substituting base, right? And it resembles thymine. So if you notice here, you have adenine. Adenine, which normally would bind to thymine, right, is binding to this bromouracil, right? So if you don't have that T, then you don't have that sequence, that letter in your DNA sequence. And there's different forms of bromouracil, 
you have this keto form and this enol form, which could resemble something like a, a cytosine, right? So you can um, replace that. And of course, having this uh, other molecule rather than a nucleotide that will greatly alter your sequence, right? Um, <clears throat> causing a mutation. So very, very detrimental here, okay? Um, which would lead to mutations. And, and thirdly, you have biological agents, which would um, uh, can also promote, you know, mutations in and um, the DNA, right? And uh, here, a famous, very famous example that you're going to see in Unit Four in much more detail is um, Agrobacterium, right? It's a bacteria, Agrobacterium, right? Tumefacients, and this produces in plants something called crown gall disease, and uh, this bacteria basically infects the roots of the cells and the stems of the cells, right? Uh, basically, plant cells. And these bacteria basically have a plasmid that can pretty much transfer on to a plant cell called the TI plants, uh, plasmid, right? And you can transfer inside a plant cell. And essentially, you can kind of hijack the DNA of the plant and stimulate it to start dividing rapidly, uncontrollably, right? Into something that looks very much like a growth. So, you know, a tumor-like growth that you can see here in the picture, right? It's because it's integrating itself in the DNA of the plant, it's essentially causing an addition mutation, if I can say, right? Um Here's a general life uh, um, cycle of this whole process. You have the little bacteria joining next to a plant cell, inserting its plasmid. And unfortunately, this little cell will start expressing certain um, uh, proteins from this little plasmid, causing it to um, basically grow rapidly, transform into this little growth here to what you see in this little image here, right? So... Um, <clears throat> While it is um, uh, pretty bad for the plants, you know, uh, it has been used in biotechnology uh, as a staple, right, um, to do studies in in um, uh, molecular biology, right. <clears throat> so engineering strains have been made to take advantage of this idea from plant to ba from bacteria to plant in uh, cloning vectors, right, to modify plants. So there's a lot of applications there, right. Um, but naturally occurring, it's it's pretty bad for the plant, right? And a, another example is the papillo, um, papilloma virus, right? The human papilloma virus, which um, infects epithelial cells of the human skin and mucosal membranes. And this virus similarly, you know, um, alters, right, the, the um, cell growth of um, human cells, right? We don't go into so much detail with uh, human papilloma virus in ATAR biology, right? So make sure you know the agrobacterium. Very, very important to know. Okay. So here's some other examples of um, uh, questions if you like to take a look at and we can answer together. <clears throat> All right. That's it for 4.4 and 4.5. I'll see you in the next video.